This time of year we go looking for humpback whales off the West Clare coastline. They push further north as the summer progresses. We were at sea for about six hours searching for whales in, in good sea conditions and there was nothing. There was hardly a seabird and totally unexpectedly um, we encountered a basking shark which is rare this time of year, especially on the surface. One of our colleagues, Dixie, had been seeing sharks from the cliffs uh, through his telescope and seeing the odd breach, uh, but not seeing any sharks on the surface. So we were kind of wondering, you know, what's going on there. Typically we see basking sharks um, in our coastal waters in the spring, that, that, that's first spring bloom of the year. And they're feeding. And as the spring progresses, they push further north. So we haven't really seen basking sharks since April or May uh, off West Clare. There are the occasional sightings through the autumn and winter, but um, that, that's kind of rare. Satellite telemetry has shown they are actually in Irish waters all year round, but they're not on the surface. And when they're not on the surface, you can't really see them and you can't really access them. So it's just the kind of rare, unusual sighting and you go, sure, that's grand. So we saw uh, a single shark on the surface and then another shark, uh, close. And then we realized actually there's lots of little black little pointy bits just sticking out the, the water and there were four or five sharks in a tight cluster which isn't how they behave you know when they're feeding as soon as we saw this cluster it dawned on us that this is this unusual rarely seen courtship behavior and we immediately went for the drone while we were flying the drone actually i was shouting to the team come on get slime sampling as well and they'd see me doing it so they kind of were familiar and uh, you know when you have a good team they jump to it and uh, go into science mode straight away. Immediately you just get an amazing perspective um, and as we drifted the sharks were completely undisturbed by the boat and then started circling around the boat. So from the air you can see not just the sharks on the surface but you can see the sharks under the surface which are kind of of course you can't see from the boat and um, and how they're interacting with each other and you just see them circling around and around it's almost like a wall of shark from the surface going down who knows how deep we counted maximum nine sharks in, in most of the ones we filmed but maybe there was a lot more um, and you you realize immediately they're not feeding you know these are not feeding aggregations this is something else something special it's a very methodical, orchestrated, choreographed behavior. Even when the pattern's broken up and it seems like the sharks are moving around randomly, um, if you just sit and watch from a distance, they just slowly fall back into that beautiful um, choreography. It's, it's almost as though they're doing synchronized swimming. I see a shark the first thing I want to do is slime it get a sample a DNA sample and certainly when they're feeding you're, you're in a hurry because you don't know how long they're going to be on the surface and, and accessible to, to sample with a long pole we we were really successful this spring off West Clare we got over 60 samples uh, of slime to look at the genetic structure so to get the opportunity to take more samples in the same location at a different time of year was just too good to miss because the theory is that these sharks in this time of year are genetically different to the sharks in the spring so this is a fantastic way of exploring that and of course in addition to that kind of stock structure we can actually look at the gender of the shark Estimating size of an animal in the water is difficult. You know, you see the dorsal fin, you see the tail fin, sometimes you see the, the tip of the nose and you try and work out the length of it. Uh, if they swim right next to the boat, you can get some kind of estimate, but you can't really see, you can't see the whole animal. 
So to be able to look at the animal from above, you get a fantastic perspective of the size of them. And we were lucky that, you know, some of the sharks swam power, literally right past the, uh, the boat with a six metre rib. So you've got a great reference there to, to um, estimate the size of the shark. And we put them into size categories. So we estimated six to eight metres in length. And they were all about the same size. In the spring, when you see them feeding, uh, you get much bigger ones, eight, nine meters, 10 meters often, uh, and you get smaller ones as well, sort of four to six meters. So these were interestingly all at the same size, all about six to eight meters. And we're only guessing at what size they become section mature, but at six to eight meters, you would expect to be section mature, both males and females. Prior to this new technology, we're doing everything from the boat and you get a perspective at sea level. So with this new technology, uh, you get a whole new view uh, of everything that's going on around you. We only bought drones last year as a group and uh, uh, only recently started flying them. Myself personally, I've only been flying them for the last few months. So every time I get one out of the case, I'm very nervous um, because it's grand flying them, but it's getting them back, especially when you're launching from a boat. Um, so you need low winds, good sea state and a good platform. You carry them, you hope to use them, you're nervous when you do, but when it all comes together and you remember to press record, um, it's just unbelievable. And what's fantastic about the drone is that while you're up there flying them, you can say to everyone around you, come and have a look at this. And like my kids were looking at it and even they got excited that they could see the boat that they were standing on. They could see the sharks all around the boat, which they couldn't see from the boat and it's just humbling, it really is. So to share that experience in real time with colleagues and friends who are putting so much time into watching from cliffs, going out on boats, hour and after hour, seeing nothing, to share that experience as it's happening and the excitement of all, honestly, everyone on both boats, on both days, will remember that to the day they die. There's something about basking sharks. I think it's the size of them, but I think it's also their elegance and their, they're really snake-like. And that, that movement, just the movement themselves, the slow movement of the tail. And then when they fall with another, another shark and they're both doing it at the same time, this kind of parallel swimming that we see in the spring when they're feeding. But to see this circular motion, this, 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 this wall of sharks going down, down deeper into the blue ocean, how, how deeper we don't know. Um, it's just so prophetic. And honestly, we know there is a thing called shark fever. And those who've been out on basking sharks catch shark fever. And it's, it's incurable. It's incurable. There is no way of getting rid of it. You just want more.